When you're working on or near potentially hazardous energy, you can't afford to take any chances with safety. Unexpected energized or startup of machines or equipment or release of stored energy can occur when you least expect it. And failure to take precautions can cause serious injury or even death. Hazardous energy is all around us. In electrical equipment, in overhead runway conductors, or in underground utilities. Direct or indirect contact with hazardous energy may cause electrical shock or other injuries. To ensure safety when performing service or maintenance on machines or equipment, you can protect yourself by first isolating the energy and ensuring continued isolation with a key style padlock and warning tag. The procedure is called lockout tagout and it could save your life. Lockout tagout must be used whenever performing near or on equipment or circuits which are or may be energized. This procedure eliminates risk of injury to both the person working at the energy source as well as employees who may be working nearby. A lockout device provides protection by holding the energy isolating device in the safe position, thus preventing the machine or equipment from becoming energized. A tagout device protects by identifying the energy isolating device as the source of potential danger. It indicates that the energy isolating device and the equipment being controlled cannot be operated until the tagout device is removed. Tagout devices carry warning signs such as do not start, do not open, do not energize, and do not operate. And they include the name of the person who placed the tagout device on the equipment. Locks and tags are placed on the energy isolating device of the equipment. That is any mechanical device that physically prevents the transmission or release of energy. The energy isolating device is usually the power disconnect that allows the equipment to operate. At Heartland Co-op there are many areas of the facility that require the employees to utilize the lockout procedures, including grain bins, pumps and motors, grain legs in the event of a choked leg or conveyor. Along with utilizing a sufficient lockout tagout program, the employees have to utilize the company's confined spaces policies and procedures as well. These two policies go hand in hand when working around grain bins and grain legs. Before entering a grain bin, a confined space permit is required. Along with a confined space permit, there needs to be a separate lockout tagout permit filled out for the reclaim or auger, a separate lockout tagout permit filled out for the incoming flow of grain, and a separate lockout tagout permit filled out for the sweep auger if the bin is equipped with one. Energy isolating devices could also be circuit breaker lockouts, plug outlet, gate valves, electrical cord plug covers, hasps, adjustable cable, electrical pneumatic plug, or other similar devices used to isolate energy. Full employee protection includes complying with all lockout tagout related provisions, plus additional safety measures that can provide the level of safety equivalent to that obtained by a lock. Please remember, when engaging or disengaging breakers or fuses, employees need to utilize the step away, look away procedure. When a tagout device is used on an energy isolating device which is capable of being locked out, the tagout device shall be attached where the lockout device would be attached or as closely as safely possible. Tags must be securely attached so they cannot be detached accidentally during use. Only authorized personnel can lock out or tag out a piece of equipment or machinery and they are the only people who can remove a lock or tag. At the same time, persons affected by lockout, tagout, and all other employees that are involved in the procedure need to recognize lockout, tagout procedures and understand their importance. If equipment is tagged out, it may not be operated until the tag has been removed by the authorized personnel that locked it out. Here are the steps to follow for standard lockout tagout procedures. First, notify everyone affected that the equipment must be shut down and locked out to perform service. 
Make sure you know the type and magnitude of energy the equipment uses. Know what the hazards are and how to control them. Shut the equipment down by the normal stopping procedure, making sure that no hazards will be created by the shutdown. Deactivate the energy isolation device or devices so the machinery cannot be started or operated and apply the lockout tagout devices. After verifying that all employees are safely positioned, make sure the equipment is de-energized. Try to start it. Press the operating button or switch. The lockout should prevent the equipment from operating. Remember to return the controls to the off position after testing. The equipment is now locked out. Once it is confirmed that startup of energy cannot occur, have the location manager or designee sign the lockout tagout permit. It is now safe to proceed with the service, maintenance, repair, etc. Here are the steps to follow to restore equipment to service. Inspect the work area to ensure that no items have been removed and that machine or equipment components are intact and capable of operating properly. Check the area around the machine or equipment to verify that all employees have been safely positioned or removed. Make sure any controls are in neutral or in the off position. Remove the lockout tagout device. If you are authorized to do so, then restart the equipment. Remember, step away, look away. Finally, notify all affected employees that servicing is complete and the equipment is ready to use. Remember, lockout tagout devices may only be removed by the employee who applied them or under their direct supervision. If the employee who attached the lock or tag is absent from the workplace, then the lock or tag may be removed by a qualified person designated to perform the task. Remember, step away, look away. In such cases, the employer must ensure that the employee who applied the lock or tag is not available and that the employee is aware that the lock or tag has been removed before he or she resumes work at that workplace. The accidental or unexpected sudden starting or contact with electrical equipment can cause severe injury or death. Before you start work, check the area for energized equipment. Follow correct procedures for lockout tagout. Avoid taking shortcuts. Even if you are not qualified to perform lockout tagout operations, be alert for warnings. Never, never remove a lock or tag from equipment or circuits unless you are authorized to do so. Lockout tagout. It's simple, it's effective, and it could save your life. This is Heartland Co-op, reminding you that safety is your job too.